The following podcast contains spoilers for Road to Perdition. You have been warned! What's up, everybody, and welcome back to KFO News Radio. This is your host, Glenjamin Button, along with your host, Miguel Megusto. How are you doing, sir, you beautiful bastard? Oh, you know, just trying to contain the rage of the world. But, you know, other than that, I'm doing just dandy. I got Animal Crossing to calm me down and forget that the world is on fire, both literally and figuratively. And The only thing that's calming me down is the thought of your smoked meats on Friday. Oh, we're going to... S- Smoke some meats. Sweet, delicious. Just so everyone listening to this, we will have eaten this by the time this podcast comes out, but we are (laughs) going to make bacon wrapped filet mignon. Sweet, silly, willy. It's going to be mucho Um, gusto. (laughs) Delicioso. (laughs) Delicioso. Or uh, as they call in in German, sehr lecker. Not as sexy as the other languages, but you know, it's fine. (laughs) It's it's all right. So, what what have you been up to since our, our last recording what movies uh, have you watched i have watched a total of seven movies damn mm-hmm. what do and you mean and that's only in the last three days what do like you mean like uh I, I like to think that i'm becoming a little bit of a you oh a small a glenjamin gusto Maybe. <laughs> um <laughs> so it all started out uh when uh, me me and a bunch of other people were watching this movie called Selfie from Hell, which is a really low budget horror movie that was made, mm-hmm. and and I had it was like a it was like a watch party, so like we were all watching this, and uh, everybody chipped in for like donating the money for it, um, and and everybody's sitting there. It's like an hour maybe long movie. Mm-hmm. And everybody's sitting there bashing this movie because it's just terrible. And like the movie critic I am, I'm sitting there I'm like, you know, this movie's not actually half bad. Like the acting, <laughs> the acting is pretty decent and the cinematography is really well done. It had some Cons- silver linings. Yeah. And considering like it's such a low budget film and the plot is horrible. Yeah. Um, it actually, well, other than, I mean, I gave it a one star regardless, but I mean, <laughs> regardless, it still had some silver linings in it and everybody was just trashed. I'm like, guys, oh, yeah. guys, it's actually not bad. Um, after that, I watched, uh, a little bit of news broke out. I'm sure we all know of it. After that, I started watching, uh, movies along the same lines. I watched, uh, Detroit. Um, Directed by Catherine Bigelow, uh, mm-hmm. starring John Boyega, uh, with the guy with the eyebrows that's in Midsummer. Mm-hmm. Um, fuck, what's his name? He's in We Are the Millers, too, gets his yeah. dick bitten by Tarantula. Um, Will, Will, Pol- Pol- Will, Will Poulter. Will Poulter, yeah. Poulter. Yeah, it's got a whole bunch of people in it. That, um, that's a. I'll probably these are a lot of movies, so I'll try to like skim through them. If yeah. uh, if you wanted to see my actual reviews, I've been writing the actual reviews for these movies. Um, they're all on Letterboxd. Um, so I watched Detroit, really powerful moving or movie. Um, yeah, I've, I feel like that one was uh, criminally overlooked. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. Now, now I understand because you know, it's such a sensitive topic and i'm not saying that this is a bad way to look at it but a lot of people probably overlooked it because it is directed by a white woman Mm -hmm. um again to each their own i i think everyone should give this film a chance regardless of who directed it because it is pretty powerful i mean it's Um, it's still it's still very powerful regardless even if it is yeah but i but i do understand why people would be a little and even if i didn't see her name at the end i wouldn't have known like yeah. it was, it was made by her. But st- I mean, still. I legitimately didn't know until a few days ago when I saw you post it. I decided to look it up. Yeah, and yeah, Catherine Bigelow. Um, so there's Detroit. Um, mm-hmm. and then after that, I watched The Squid and the Whale, which uh, has Noah a bunch Bombach, of stars. Right? Yep. Yeah. Has a bunch of stars: Jeffrey Daniel or Jeff Daniels, um, Jesse Eisenberg, Laura Linney, and Owen Klein. A bunch of other people in that. It's actually, if you're a child of divorce, it, it kind of hits a little bit harder. Uh, yeah. Than just an average human being watching it. Yeah. Um, it's, a very, it's actually a very strong movie. I mean, it yeah. wasn't great, but like the the underlying like story there is actually mm-hmm. pretty strong. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm uh, one of the normies you speak of. So yeah, I, I enjoyed that movie, but it didn't hit 
as hard emotionally as it probably did you and yeah. ch- children of divorce. So uh, I feel a little uh, a little gypped that I didn't. My parents <laughs> didn't divorce, and I didn't get to watch it. No, I'm honestly, kidding. how dare they? So you didn't get to <laughs> they, ride this emotion. I I am not a good writer because they are together. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. My writing has nothing to do with that. <laughs> um, so after that movie, uh, I was like, all right, I just watched two depressing movies in a row. Mm-hmm. Let's, uh, let's spice it up a little bit. And I had just seen that you watched this movie, too. Uh, the Lovebirds. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, um, was it, uh, Issa Rae, is that her name? And uh, Kumail Nanjiani. Mm-hmm. I'm always like questioning this because I'm not looking it up because I'm a weirdo. But uh, yeah, Issa Rae and Kumail Nanjiani. That, that, I, I really enjoyed that. It's a it's a fun movie, kind of like Date Night um, from a few years back with uh, Tina Fey and Steve Carell. Yeah. Um, I thought this kind of had a little bit more charm to it, and I I I enjoyed Date Night a lot. I actually own it on on Blu-ray, but it's it's this was very similar to that, in, uh you know, a couple uh, going through things that most couples don't go through such as crime yeah i i wrote i wrote down that it was it was a typical date night yeah. rom-com movie um but what really held you um uh, really held you in was the two main actors Issa Rae yeah. and Kamel nanjiani yeah they had and a lot of really good chemistry yeah. yeah um after that i watched a spike lee film or, i'm sorry a spike lee joint uh she's gotta have it mm-hmm. um which has got a lot of people in it uh Spike Lee, for instance, uh, Tracy Camilla Johns, uh, Tommy Redmond Hicks, and uh, John Canada Terrell. And then Spike Lee, there's a bunch of other people in it. Yeah. Um, after after all this news has been going down, I feel like I've kind of done an in, in, injustice as to not watching a lot of black-made films. So I am going to continue doing so. Yeah. Um, and Spike Lee's just a great like pillar for those movies Definitely. so i'm just gonna do those if you, if you need more recommendations i made a list i think it was sunday night of uh most of the films were by uh black filmmakers um there were a few that i made exceptions for just because i did feel they were either powerful or you know so blatantly obvious in their message that even the dumb dums can get it after watching it yeah um so yeah, you you could check that out. Uh, uh, another one of his films was on it. Um, uh, Do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's a great Which one. Which was actually going to be the next one that I was going to watch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's uh, Spike Lee's a great director. I really didn't appreciate him for the longest time, and then I think it was like five six years ago I watched Do the Right Thing, just yeah. completely changed my opinion of him. I I went back and watched the movies I had seen before. Uh, was it wasn't that many, um, but yeah, he's a, he's a great, great a- uh, director and a pretty and, fu- and actor. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty pretty funny, and she's got to have it, which I also watched. So, um, and then uh, yeah, that was that was a good movie. Um, really give you like a woman's point of view on things, and then like, well, not a woman's point of view, but like, it, it goes into very, the whole slut shaming thing. It's a it very it's a it's a predicament. Yeah. <laughs> A bunch of people's different uh, views and their backgrounds and stuff like that. It's a really interesting movie, and I really liked it. Um, yeah. After that, I watched School Days, which was another uh, Spike Lee joint. A mm-hmm. um, bunch of people in that. I thought it was uh, I thought it was interesting. Uh, I, I liked it. He has a way of like creating these characters in conversations that make it feel like reality. Mm-hmm. And there's he's really weirdly good with sex scenes. Like it doesn't feel like just a sex scene. It didn't feel and, gratuitous. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it feels like, and I put this in most of my reviews, it feels like art. Like, it feels like it's happening, like, yeah. and it should be there, which is which is a really cool way of, like, having, like, a style, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, after that, I watched another um, one, another one called uh, Monsters and Men, um, which has John David Washington in it, uh, as we know, is Denzel Washington's son. And yep, I had star remarked of Black to you. Black Klansman. Yes, sir. And I had remarked to you that... If his career keeps going the way it does, he's easily going to be one of my favorite actors. Oh yeah, he's phenomenal. Like in 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 Black Klansman, he just he was so good in that scene. Like mm-hmm. he, he was doing a voice the whole time, uh, you know, trying to emulate the uh, real life yep. police officer that he played, who was often said to speak quote unquote white. Not my words. That's what people said he spoke like, 
and uh he, it didn't seem like he was doing a a bit while while talking like that he actually felt like he was talking like that mm -hmm. to the point where when i heard his actual voice i was like this makes sense but it's also kind of weird <laughs> yeah um another really good movie really hits hard um it's like three different points of views on uh, this one story and it's mm -hmm. really strong strong and moving movie yeah. especially with the things that are going on now yeah um, other than that, the last one I watched was Road to Perdition, and we'll yeah. get to that in just a minute. Yeah, so for you, Mike. Well, before that, for everyone that uh, went to Netflix to watch Road to Perdition and it wasn't there anymore, literally the day we posted the last episode saying we were going to watch Road to Perdition and saying it was on Netflix, they took it off Netflix. Uh, <laughs> so if you had to rent it, I'm sorry, but it's also worth the money in my opinion. Uh, the movies I watched, I watched uh, six movies all together, two that I had already seen and then four that I hadn't. I watched uh, Creature uh, from the Black Lagoon. I've been trying to go through all the Warner Brothers uh, monster movies. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know. Or Universal. Who, whoever it's probably, did that It's one. Universal because I just read an article about who they are casting as the Wolfman. Yeah. Uh, well, who, who are they casting as the Wolfman? We'll get to that in news. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I, that was really good. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, then I watched... Uh, Asperger's R Us, which, is, as some of you may remember, was one of the Netflix roulette choices. Mm -hmm. uh, it really piqued my interest when we landed on it, but of course we had to go with Road to Perdition. Uh, so I wanted to watch Asperger's R Us, and I did, and it's really enjoyable. I, I highly enjoyed it. You know, it's it's a really funny documentary, kind of touching. Um, so if you get a chance, definitely check it out. You know, it's uh, funny, after you posted that you saw it, I was like, oh man, now I feel like I have to watch it. Now I, <laughs> not like you, in a bad way, I was yeah. just like, oh, now I now I feel bad. You should, you definitely should watch it. I think it's only like an hour and a half, if not mu okay. not much longer, and it's it's really compelling. Uh, then I watched The Lovebirds with Issa Rae, Kamel Nanjiani, that was good. Uh, then I watched She's Gotta Have It, uh, and then I you know or already talked about that one so um spike lee was hilarious in that by the way he, he was oh, absolutely making me laugh my ass off um but then uh i watched uh inside lou and davis coen brothers movie that i had seen a few times i was just um, saying is that the first time you saw it no 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 i've seen every single coen brothers movie yeah that's, ever made. that's like wait what <laughs> and i plan to keep it that way whenever they release one i'm gonna see it as soon as possible um, but yeah, she's got to have, it's really great. It's Spike Lee joint. Um, and then of course I watched Road to Perdition. We'll get into that in just a minute. Mm -hmm. Uh, that brings us to the news of the week for movie news. Uh, we're not going to get into the world news. I'm sure everyone's keeping up with that. Um, but the movie news, uh, I'll, uh, I, Glenn, uh, ha have you heard this thing that you definitely didn't send to me to talk about, which was the Rocky documentary that's coming out? No, I've never heard that thing that I possibly did not or did send to you. Not, <laughs> not never. <laughs> so, uh, you know, your boys are from from the Philly area, not from Philly, but the Philly area. Yeah, uh, and uh, we all love Rocky because it is legally. It's, it's, it's a legal it's, obligation for people. It's legally injected in our blood that yes, we have to love. <laughs> we have to love Rocky. Um, and they are releasing a documentary about the making of Rocky, uh, which includes some of Sylvester Stallone's life leading up to making Rocky, um, that comes out on June 9th from Virgil Films, and it will be a on-demand, you know, kind of rental situation for a while, probably before it gets distribution from Prime or Netflix or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's it's going to be narrated by Sylvester Stallone, so it's definitely got that uh, that sly stamp that of approval. Rocky charm, you know. Hey, hey. Wonder Yo, Adrian. You mind marrying me yeah. much. Uh, but it is... Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm, I'm glad that you definitely did not share this with me. No, and not And that a I chance. found this on my own. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> if, if you ever want to hear some of the interesting stuff that Sylvester Stallone went through while writing Rocky. I think if I'm not mistaken, he was living in a car when he was writing the script for Rocky. Um, and it turned into an award winning best picture winning best screenplay winning. I think mm -hmm. I could be mistaken, uh, film and, and highest grossing film of that year as well. Highest grossing film of that year. And, uh, there is a freaking statue outside of the Philadelphia art museum yep. for Rocky. So it is definitely, a cultural thing, uh, and when other cities use the Rocky theme in their stadiums, do I feel like they are kind of appropriating our culture? A little <laughs> bit, but, you know, I'll let it slide, because 
I get it. Slide like sly. Yeah. So Ew. yeah, that is coming out June 9th, and it will be called uh, 40 Years of Rocky, The Birth of a Classic. Yeah, I'm, I definitely feel like I'm interested in seeing that. Uh, yeah, even same if here. I have to rent it and not wait. I, I, I do want to see it. Um, but other than that, uh, of course I gave that to you because you would be more uh, educated about it than I. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> I got the one that I'd be more educated in. <laughs> And that is uh, Henry Henry Cavill uh, is in talks of returning to the uh, DCEU. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of either rumors or you know speculations have been saying that he's basically uh, basically going to be uh, what you would assume is the Hulk in the MCU. Um, how he he basically only had cameos or was just kind of a backstory compared to his like his only like only movies mm-hmm. like Man of Steel. Um, so that's what seems like it's going to be happening, especially since he's such a busy man now with all that he's doing. Yeah. Um, which I mean, letting, letting go of Henry Cavill as Superman was probably the dumbest thing in my mind, um, that they did for a while. Oh, I yeah. mean, other than their movies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, the thing uh, is, I, the thing about the, um, Justice League. Yeah. Legitimately, I thought the casting was the best part. I thought yeah. every everyone was well cast. It was just the writing; it, it just fell apart, really. But everyone, like even Ben it, Affleck, it needed I think a was lot a good more Batman. time. The casting yeah. was pitch perfect. Yes, but they needed they needed time. They needed to build it up more. They they jumped right into saving the entire world right out of the get go. So yeah, um, and like you've established this universe where you have all these great actors and their characters already basically committed and then you're just gonna get rid of the main guy who i per- personally feel like is perfect for superman yeah um and when i got the news that he was let go i was like are you kidding me no way <laughs> mm-hmm. i even made like a status about it on facebook and uh everything but uh but yeah he's he, apparently he's coming back which is amazing even if it's in small roles i will absolutely take it because i love that man he's a beautiful man yeah um, what news will come after though? Uh, we'll, we'll obviously be staying tuned for, so mm-hmm. we shall see. Yeah. And then you want to know about Wolfman? Uh, yeah. I did pass an article, uh, saying Ryan Gosling was cast. Huh. Now, whether it's true or not, I didn't read it completely. I just saw the article. Yeah. Uh, and, and passed by looking for the news. Uh, so yeah, Ryan, I actually was like, oh, holy shit. Yeah. That'd actually be cool. Oh, I can see it. Yeah. But I'd have to see how the rest of the movie is. Mm -hmm. Like, is it going to be a period piece? Who's going to direct it? There's a whole bunch of other questions. I don't think it's bad casting, but I will withhold any... Yeah. uh, Opinions opinions until until we get further. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a little too... He's not like uh, the the kind of casting where I'm just like, oh yeah, this movie's going to be good no matter what. Yeah. Um I, I have to hear more about that. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, he's he's another actor that I love and I I hope that uh the movie does well and that yeah. whole universe that they're setting up with that becomes uh very well done as well. So well, if they get their shit together and stop trying to do stupid <laughs> shit with it. Yes. <laughs> like they're they're trying to do too much with it. They're trying to make it too action packed. Stick to the smaller stories and then spread out from there. Mm-hmm. Like they they're Especially with the the most recent mummy, it was like, oh, we got to save the world immediately. Well, this isn't fucking Avengers; it's the mummy. Wait, are we talking about that? Oh god! Uh, Insert yeah. Tom Cruise scream here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, all right, uh, yeah, that does it for news. So let's jump into Road to Perdition. Glenn, as always, you take the synopsis. <laughs> Road to Perdition. <laughs> A mob enforcer's son witnesses a murder forcing him and his father to take to the road. And his father down... Did I already mess up? (laughs) Did I already mess up? You did. You did. Son of a bitch. Rewind time. (laughs) A mob mob enforcer's son witnesses a murder forcing him and his father to take to the road. And his father down a path of redemption and revenge. Got a first try, baby. Hold on. Forcing him and his father to take... To the road and his father down a path. Okay, so his father gets redemption and revenge. That's, that's I'm not why gonna blame it felt you. like that's, I messed up. That's yeah. a weird one. This one this one is poorly written. Not that it doesn't make sense, but it, it is it it makes you think. Uh it is directed by Sam Mendes, written by 
uh, David Self, uh, based on the graphic novel by Max Allen Collins and Richard Pierce Rayner. It is starring Tom Hanks. Uh, Glenn? Tyler Hoechlin. <laughs> Sorry, this isn't in order of importance. It's in order of um, appearance. So Paul Newman, yeah. Daniel Craig, uh, Kieran Hines. He got some Stanley Tooch in there. Good old Stanley Tooch. Um, and a bunch of other people. Uh, Jennifer Jason Lee's in there for a hot second. Liam Macon. It's got a whole bunch of cast of characters. Peter, I can't come to your concert tonight. I'm working. Working at what? What's Papa's job? He works for Mr. Rooney. Who's got a hug for a lonely old man? Papa didn't have a father. So Mr. Rooney looked after him. You rule this town as God rules the earth. I love Mr. Rooney. We had nothing. He gave us a home. A life. Oh. <laughs> he goes on missions for Mr. Rooney. Take Mike with you. Not Park. Take Mike with you. They're very dangerous. That's why he brings his gun. And yeah, let me just say, when Netflix Roulette pulled one out for us mm-hmm. and gave us a little gem to watch. Oh, yeah, it's also starring Jude Law. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was ecstatic. I had just watched this again for like probably the 30th time or whatever, like three weeks ago. And uh, I was able to catch it before it was on Netflix because I don't procrastinate, Glenn. I just want to have it fresh in my mind as possible. No, no, I, I get you. I, I probably we both know my mind strays. Yeah, <laughs> I probably would have waited as well if uh, you know I hadn't just seen it three weeks ago too. Um, but this is a beautiful movie. It is uh, beautifully shot by the late Conrad L. Hall. I believe he won the Oscar uh, posthumously for best cinematography. Um, and it is also one of Paul Newman's last on-screen performances as well. Uh, you know, one of the greatest actors to have ever lived. And it is yeah. it is just a wonderful movie. The, the thing that I think was best about it um, was how quickly... We said this about Under the, the, uh, Under the Shadow as well, that they build the world so quickly. Uh, with this, it's just... Um, you know, the sequence of the son, uh, Michael Jr., going, uh, riding his bike home from the store, mixed with the funeral that happens, like, shortly after. It just builds the funeral, builds this world of this organized crime and the quote-unquote family that it creates. Um, and then also showing you the kind of people they are by having Kieran Hines, whose brother's funeral it is, uh, mm-hmm. His hand shaking while he's speaking, and then you know he he starts to speak up, and they have to break up the speech. It it just in such a short amount of time just builds this world and lets you know exactly who everyone is and what their motives are and what kind of people they are in like ten fifteen minutes. Like it's no time at all. It's 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 brilliant the way it's done. Exactly. Yeah, man. Rewatching this again was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like, normally you don't sit there and go, you know, Tom Hanks, that guy's badass. Like, usually he's just a goofy, goofy guy, like oh, goofy, yeah. serious actor or anything like that. And you're just like, you know what? He's actually just a badass in this film. Yeah, there's moments in this where he's kind of terrifying, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you view it from his son's um, viewpoint, and there are points where you're just like, holy shit. And because Tom Hanks is America's dad, it was like, holy shit, yeah. dad's a murderer. <laughs> well, it doesn't and, help he wore so many layers in the film, so he was just like this huge force to be messed with oh, yeah, the whole yeah. time. They, they made him look really big. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just such a unique role for him. Not not in general, just for him. You know, yeah. He usually plays the uh, the wholesome characters. I mean, he played fucking Mr. Rogers and... and yeah. And uh, he's just there's another movie that uh, he plays kind of a villain character. He's not the villain in this, but he's villain adjacent. Yeah. For like the first 20 minutes, like 20, 30 minutes. But 
anti-hero i guess we could say yeah that's that's the better word for it but the movie the circle which overall was not good Mm -hmm. uh but he plays a a pretty pretty bad guy in that he's also pretty terrifying so it just shows you the depth that he has as an actor you know obviously he's known for these really wholesome good guy roles but he's He's definitely he still, got the darkness. He dark still has a stance somewhere in yeah. the, uh, the darker roles. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, another great performance in this is Daniel Craig, um, who plays the son of Paul Newman, who, uh, you know, he he's kind of the reason everything starts with, with uh, yeah. killing Kieran Hines, uh, which was a beautiful sequence, if you ask me. Like, when, when Kieran Hines gets shot, it turns to slow motion to show, like, the impact it's having on... Uh, Michael Jr. Mm-hmm. Um, that was just that's a great way to do that, and then it it uh then he kills the family, which kind of leads everyone down this path. He is also terrifying, but in a way where it's just like, I'm glad he doesn't have power now, and I hope he never gets power. Yeah, because he is definitely not the kind of person you yeah, want to have. He's definitely power. not the person you want to see with the power. Yeah. And like even even Paul Newman's character knew that he was like, "Oh my mm-hmm. God, my son!" Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> I fucking curse the day he beats you the were born. shit out of. Him. Oh yeah, <laughs> I curse the day. <laughs> yeah. Oh it's... yeah, man. This uh, this movie, especially like, yeah. even during the end, when they're basically just chasing these two throughout the whole film. Mm-hmm. And then in the end, you're just like hoping that like. Daniel Craig's not sitting there waiting for Tom Hanks. And then Tom Hanks gets the... Uh, I know we're jumping ahead a lot, but uh, Tom Hanks, he's like, oh, good. <laughs> Done. <laughs> he's just yeah. like, that's that's right. Oh, yeah. Just that, desserts. <laughs> that brings me to the sound design, because there are so many sequences in this that has beautiful sound design. Mm-hmm. Uh, that sequence is one of them, uh, because it starts off with Paul Newman and his gang going to his car in the rain, the driver's dead, and then you just see muzzle flashes coming from the darkness, completely silent, only music, not even the rain is heard, and Paul Newman just freezes and just lets what happens, happens. And the sound design, that's just beautiful. The the score by Thomas Newman is perfect for it, um, where it's just this... It's not triumphant, it's not heroic, it is mournful because he it it knows that this man meant so much to to tom hanks's character but it needs to happen what he he needs to be killed uh for the revenge to be yeah. finalized and this the that sequence and it builds up and then the rain comes back in as the score dies and paul newman just says i'm glad it's you mm-hmm. right before tom hanks just like pulls the trigger and just kills him. Drops the whole mag into him. And then the echoing of the gunshots on the buildings. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Yeah, That that scene overall was just so powerful, especially when Paul Paul Newman delivers that line Mm -hmm. and Tom Hanks' face afterwards. Uh, Oh, yeah. It's it's, it's super, super strong scene. And then it then it knows the difference between killing Paul Newman and killing Daniel Craig mm-hmm. because right after that it goes into the sequence of killing Daniel Craig, which kind of becomes this intense, slightly mm-hmm. triumphant but more uh, more determined score as he walks into the hotel, goes up the elevator, walks down the hallway. Which if you've never seen a behind the scenes of that that sequence, it's remarkable how they got that shot on that. Um, that dolly shot on the ceiling and it comes down. Uh, essentially they had the set, uh, the ceiling like pulled apart. And then as the camera passed, they pushed it back together. Oh, wow. Just a remarkable coordination between the entire crew and, and, uh, and actors and camera sound, everyone. And then you don't even see him kill him. You see the aftermath with the, the door closing and the mirror mm-hmm. revealing it. It's just, Conrad L. Hall, Sam Mendes, Thomas Newman, the the sound design, everything is fucking perfect about this movie. At, at least that sequence, and I, I yeah. would argue the rest of the movie too. Yeah, that that whole sequence there was extremely extreme. Like the whole the whole Paul Newman was extremely moving, and like you felt it. And then mm-hmm. like then it's just Tom Hanks yeah. just nonstop moving, and you're just yeah. ready because you're like you know what's going down. Absolutely, he's just and- not stopping. It's just nonstop movement. And then once he gets to the room, he stops. Bang. Oh, yeah. Bang, bang. 
It's beautiful. And then, and then it moves back out slowly, and then the mirror shows. It's really, really well done whole yeah. sequence. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not saying like the murder itself right. is beautiful. Obviously, murder is horrific, no matter what it is. Oh no, it was just, it was a gruesome scene. <laughs> yeah, just the way it's shot is just incredible. Another thing that um, one of my favorite shots in this is the introduction of Jude Law's character. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, Thomas Newman has like this quirky score to to inform the audience that. N- not things aren't right with this character you know he's kind of uh eccentric and in a way it kind of it makes you uneasy. a very good word for it yes Uh, yeah (laughs) and it starts with him walking under the train system in chicago and it's a push pull so it makes it look like the uh it makes it look like jude law's character's not moving even though his legs are moving and then the 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 scene um i can't remember if it squeezes or expands do you remember i do not actually okay uh, i i feel like it's expands but you know either way um it just creates this unease and then he goes in to take a picture over the dead body but it's not a dead body and then he kills the fucking dead body they do so well at telling you who these characters are in their very first scenes it is like character writing 101 character mm-hmm. character introduction 101 if you want to be a writer and you want to see how to introduce a character watch this fucking movie because they do that so fu- fu- so phenomenally oh they do um, and then the cinematography in that that's probably my favorite shot in the entire thing with the scene with jude law walking under the the, the train system um, yeah between that and the shootout uh with paul newman was oh yeah those, those two yeah. easily one of the two of the best shots easy absolutely and then of course how can we n- not talk about that final scene again sound design mm-hmm. coming in hot they're at the beach there's a score but then the score goes away and you just hear the waves and then you hear the gunshot Jude law shoots tom hanks what the fuck and it's just silent the entire time I- except for the sound of the waves and like n- no one even speaks up jude law whispers the entire time it's so creepy and and so intense the way they they did that and it's it's just i honestly have no bad things to say about this film i i can't think of a single bad part honestly same um and that yeah that scene in particular sucked because you're like oh man they finally they finally got it out they got their revenge next thing you know big old american daddy goes down and Mm -hmm. it's just the, the whole sad thing yeah. If anything, if Tom Hanks didn't die in this film, I would say that is the one flaw because yeah, that, that you, you can't have like as much as Tom Hanks is the antihero in this, you can't have him not be punished. Mm-hmm. And as as terrible as it sounds, his family being murdered is not punishment enough for what he's done. Um, it's it's more punishment to them than it is to him because he, he knows what he got them into. Um, and, and so had he not died, had it just ended on him looking at the beach and been a happy ending, it would have cheapened the entire thing. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just such, it's such a well-balanced film. I honestly, I'm struggling to think of anything bad to say. <laughs> well, just don't <laughs> leave it at that. Well, fucking fine. I won't. <laughs> this definitely isn't an, a shelf boy for sure. No, no, no. Uh, but I mean, I've pretty much said everything I have to say. Sound design, cinematography, acting, directing, mm-hmm. writing, everything is just this, fantastic. This movie about definitely this film. would not have been the same without a rated R move, uh, rating as well. Oh, absolutely. If they did the PG 13 shit for that, mm-hmm. luckily Sam Mendes had just, I believe, come off of American Beauty. Um, so he kind of was in this place where he could pretty much make whatever he wanted. Yeah. Um, with with the success of American Beauty, so uh, I'm glad that he did this, because um, I honestly can't think of another director who would do it justice. Honestly, um, same. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. That's all I have to say about it. Uh yeah. Uh, every everybody in this movie was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that that's really the only other thing that I had, but that's just adding to the beauty of the whole movie. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> why not just keep calling it beautiful? You know. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I also have to say as well. Yeah. I apologize that I talked so much during this one, but I kind of nah, dude, let your passion flow. I, ca- I kept just thinking of how how great it is, and just yeah, wanted to talk about it. <laughs> I don't blame you, <laughs> considering last Netflix was. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm Hitchcock, honestly glad that we are doing Netflix roulette, not because we watch this. Like I could watch this whenever and talk about it whenever, but mm-hmm. it, it it's just it's fun having 
one week where neither of us are picking the movie and it's just yeah we're picking the best of three um so i'm i'm glad we're gonna keep netflix around it was a it was a bit rocky there but well i see what you did there but also please sponsor us we're doing this for you (laughs) netflix sponsor us (laughs) so that brings us to les jugements glenn i'll let you do the honors is this going to be a shelf boy a little boy scout saluting the flag his pants at a normal level and his shoes right, so tied ni- here's, nicely here's the scene ready mm-hmm. it's a dark night you and five of your henchmen are just walking you to your car who are you well you're just a trash can right you're just a <laughs> measly old trash can walking to your car walking around with the shelf boys that also belong in your your trash can right mm-hmm. right in your body Next thing you know, you see a gun flash. You know who that is? That's Road to Perdition saying, get the hell out of here. I belong on a shelf. <laughs> Gunning down every bodyguard of that trash. This belongs on the shelf, dude. Yeah, and then as Road to Perdition <laughs> comes to kill the trash can after mm-hmm. it's killed all its henchmen, the trash can turns to Road to Perdition and says, I'm glad it was you. Yeah. Because it is a goddamn shelf boy, and only a shelf boy can kill the trash can that the non-shelf boys go into. <laughs> end scene (laughs) end scene that was probably the weirdest way we could have said that it was a shelf boy but i'm glad it went that way Uh, (laughs) so with road to perdition being a shelf boy along with you know it apostle and uh (laughs) under under the shadow (laughs) what did i expect (laughs) i at this point it's just a gag so yeah uh with with road to perdition being a shelf boy that brings us to this week's plugs just to switch things up i'll go first this time uh I'm going to be a little uh, a little selfish with this one because my film Eugene versus Humanity was just released on Amazon Prime, uh, so everyone should go watch it and and rate it and hopefully enjoy it. But if you don't enjoy it, I'm sorry. But I'm very proud that this is on uh, on Amazon is... Prime. Glenn is in it. Glenn plays the Good Samaritan. <laughs> is it uh, is it weird that was going to be my plug? Is it? Was it really? <laughs> So both of our plugs is to watch Eugene versus Humanity, which I wrote and directed. Glenn uh, stars in and has the best line delivery out of any anybody in the whole thing. Oh my god! All right. What's going on, Eugene? Is everything okay? I'm just so tired of people. They walk around pretending like they live by some strict moral code or something, but they don't. They're rude. They're crass. They're unnecessarily cruel and violent. They walk around pretending like they've evolved past their more primitive instincts or something, but they haven't. Those instincts have just changed with them. Evolved with them. But now, instead of fighting over the best food for the best mate, they're just fighting over money and power. And they like to pretend like they see the beauty in each other, but they don't. They're all just faking and smiling to get whatever it is that they want out of you. But they would eat you up, chew you up, and spit you out if they thought it would bring them even a single iota of happiness or fulfillment. Humanity's a plague. And with plagues come chaos. And I'm, just, I'm just so tired of chaos. Um, and so, Good yeah, news is I, I did have, I did have two plugs. So there's that. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I definitely watch Eugene versus humanity. Uh, I watched it again. Uh, I actually, I think I actually paid the money for it just because, you know, Aww, I, babe. I love you. 
Um, <laughs> and it's it's a phenomenal short film. Even if I'm not in it, I would still say it was. Yeah, it's so Colin, well done. Colin, who plays Eugene, is. Mm-hmm. It's it's a tragedy that he is not a more well known actor. Yeah, it is because he is fucking great, and I'm not just saying that because I've known him since we were seven. Uh, he has spent the past like almost twenty years like perfecting his craft, and he is great. And unfortunately, does not get much work. So uh, go we'll, give him we'll, some support. We'll get him there. We'll get him there. We'll get him there. So yeah, Eugene versus Humanity on Amazon. And uh, so the backup that I had was, um, ironically enough, you had mentioned this earlier, was a list of uh, black-made films um, that, from the last 30 years. So um, we got movies like Queen and Slim, uh, Straight Out of Brooklyn, Fresh, that's just Black Klansman, Poetic Justice, Juice. There's there's like 39 films, I think, total or something oh, yeah. like that. And I definitely plan on utilizing this list along with going off of some that even aren't. Um, yeah because right now is a it's a perfect time to just yeah just watch some of yeah, this stuff I mean, just if, learn. if you're like me like i i definitely want to support this cause as much as possible mm-hmm. but legitimately the only thing that i even begin to say i'm afraid of is crowds i get extreme anxiety in crowds so mm-hmm. because of that unfortunately i will not be going to any protests but you can also support causes just by supporting you know black arts and yep. and and doing what you can to show that they are valued members of the society of our, our society and and uh not everything has to be and you know done via going to actual physical protests you can yeah. you can do a lot more you can donate yeah there's always to plenty of ways to actually help yeah, um, I myself will be going to one on Thursday so wish me luck everybody I, I wish you luck it is honestly and, uh, the most terrifying thing not be not protest like i feel the same way about going to disney world and shit but i do that because you can also find space it's yes. it's more organized at disney world and and <laughs> and uh stadiums than it is and and you know i don't want to say spontaneous protests this, these ones are planned but yeah I, i'm getting anxiety just thinking about it <laughs> holy shit i missed one i can't believe i missed one. Oh yeah oh my god i missed the movie um, if Beale Street could talk. Oh, if Beale Street could talk, that's a great one too. Um, that is a fantastic one. But anyway, yeah, it's beautiful. that's all the movies that <laughs> yeah. and everything. That's the plug. So um, where was that again? I'm sorry. Oh, oh, sh- oh, yeah. So the the uh, the article is on Complex. Um, <sighs> best black movies of the last thirty years. Best black movies of the last thirty years on Complex and Eugene versus Humanity on Amazon Prime, directed by yours truly and co-starring. Glenn truly years um, other truly <laughs> so that brings us to our next week's assignment this time it is my choice uh and I'm gonna pull a Glenn real quick and I'm going to give Glenn a choice of three movies That's, um I'm not gonna tell me. you I'm not gonna tell you what they are I'm gonna give you their prices but mm-hmm. also let you know that I own the two that you have to pay money for so when you come over Friday we can just watch them hey, that but, works. You can either we can either watch a movie that is uh four dollars on Amazon, three ninety nine. I'm just gonna round it up. Four dollars on Amazon. Well, Amazon, YouTube, iTunes, four dollars pretty much everywhere to rent, one that is two dollars everywhere to rent, and then one that is free on Netflix. Netflix sponsor us. Even if let's we go don't with the, let's go with the medium and uh hit the two dollars. Hit the two dollar one? Okay. So the two dollar one is uh we have both seen this, but you know. I was recently talking to someone and I want to rewatch it. Okay. Uh, it is Lost River, directed oh, and wow. written by Ryan Gosling, uh, <laughs> starring Christina Hendricks. Uh, Speaking Sir, of the Wolfman himself. <laughs> yep, yep. Saoirse Ronan, Matt Smith, Ben Mendelsohn, and Ava Mendes. Uh, it is about a single mother who is swept into a dark underworld while her teenage son discovers a road that leads him to a secret underwater town. Looks like we're the only ones left. There's still people here. How can I help? I'd like to stay in the house. Do you mind if I ask why? Because I have two boys and that is our home. 
I found a road that goes underwater. Must go down to that town. What town? They flooded a bunch of towns when they dammed the river. That's why they call this Lost River. As soon as the last town was drowned, a spell was cast. Everything that's going on around here, it's got to be for some reason. This is my country. This is my city. Don't let me see your face again. Fully running everything now. Head south, man. You're a very beautiful lady. What's this? It's a job. Where is that? Somewhere over the rainbow. Let's put it that way. Is it dangerous? The door is locked. You're fine. And why would you steal from Billy? He's trouble. He'll hurt you. Hey! You better run your ass! What's keeping you here? I mean, my mom, Frankie. Is that what's keeping you here? Um, this movie, I feel like. All I'm going to say about it is that it gets a bad rap. I feel like it is mm-hmm. better than its rating shows. So I'm hoping that even like if th- like two or three more people watch this movie because we are bringing it up, uh, I'm hoping more people oh, for sure. watch it. So, uh, yeah, that is Lost River. I'll definitely you can, have some words about that movie. Yes. You can rent it pretty much anywhere for uh, about $2. And uh, if you own it, even better. That's great. Yeah. That's uh that's our assignment for next week. Lost there River. There we go. Yeah. So as always, thank you everyone for listening. You can follow us on our website, www.keystonefilmreview.com. On Instagram, we are Keystone underscore film underscore review. Twitter, Keystone underscore film. Facebook, Keystone Film Review. And on Letterbox, I am Mike KFR. And I am Glenn KFR. And that will do it until next week when we discuss Lost River. Goodbye, everybody. Bye bye, silly willies. Thank <laughs> you.